Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, today we're going to take a look at something that I've had a lot of requests for over the past few months, and uh, that's called J Downloader. In fact, today we're going to take a look at J Downloader 2. Um, I've had a lot of people request this over the past few months, and I didn't uh, know what it was. Uh, actually, up until uh, a stream that I did recently where somebody kind of explained it to me uh, that it's kind of like the the, YT, or the YouTube Downloader uh, application that we installed uh, a month or two ago, uh, but this does more than and just uh, let you download media files. This lets you basically download anything you want. Um, and it turned out that the, the issue I was having was the, um, the, the, the Docker container image that I was using. Uh, I hadn't set it up correctly. I was using the wrong ports. Uh, there was a lot of things that just weren't working and uh, I just didn't understand what I was doing wrong because I didn't understand the, the premise of the application itself. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at J Downloader 2. One of the big issues I face as a content creator revolves around hard drives. Videos take up storage space, and my computer case doesn't have a lot of space for hard drives. Luckily, the folks over at IcyDoc sent me their Tough Armor 2.5 inch PCIe Hot Swap Mobile Rack. Installation was super easy, and it lets me swap out hard drives without having to shut down my system. Be sure to check out IcyDoc's website for their full product line. Okay, so here we are on my desktop, and uh, we're taking a look at uh, hub.docker.com. Uh, this is JR or JLE Sages uh, J Downloader 2. Now we've used uh, JLE Sages uh, uh, Docker containers in the past; they've always worked. Uh, I have no issue or no no reason to think that this one will have any other issues, like any like none of the others did either. Wow, um, yeah, definitely need more of this this morning. So. Uh, in order to make this work, we're gonna to have to uh, modify this just a little bit because we can. Uh, we don't wanna necessarily wanna run this in an SSH command, uh, that sort of thing. And unless you're running in swarm mode, this version three won't work. We're gonna to have to switch that to version two. We're gonna to have to change some things to make it work, but we'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. Um, I will have uh, all of this in the blog post linked in the description down below. Um, so we're gonna take a look at uh, modifying this. Uh, also, there will be uh, some more information uh, somewhere down here about some additional ports. Uh, there's somewhere on this page. I will find them. There they are. Uh, the, the, the port 58, that's mandatory. That's how we're going to access uh, the user interface, the GUI uh, via a browser window. Uh, I have had issues with this working in Chrome, but I don't have any issues with it working in Firefox. Uh, we've had this issue in the past uh, with... Um, Handbrake, it was Handbrake. So yeah, we had this issue in the past with Handbrake, a very similar issue. Um, a lot of people told me to clear the cookies, clear the cache, do all the, it, does, it doesn't work. Uh, I tried it, it didn't work for me anyway. So uh, we are going to open this in Firefox once we get it deployed. So, um, so anyway, port 5900 is used for a VNC protocol. And then uh, port 3129 is used for the MyJ Downloader mobile application. Uh, so all of that will be available uh, in the blog post as well for with more information there. Uh, so let's jump over uh, to Portainer here and let's add a stack. Now I've already got a modified version uh, of that over here uh, in a notepad. So uh, let me give this a name real quick like, and then we can take a look. Uh, we switched version uh, three to version two. Uh, everything else here is basically the same, but I took the quotes off of ports 5800. Version two doesn't require that. Um, and then below that, we've got a couple of volumes, one for the configuration and one for where things will get output to. So uh, right now we've got, uh, what we're gonna have to do is actually create a couple of folders in Open Media Vault. So if we come over to Open Media Vault and go to shared folders, I've already created this config folder, um, and that's uh, this SRB dev disk by label files config. Uh, that's what we've got here uh, up to this point. And then I just appended it with J downloader two, so that it'll put all of the configuration files uh, in that particular folder. Now, the, the next one for the output, I've got that under YouTube um, I, because I have, I'm actually using the same folder that I'm using for um, the, the YouTube downloader script that, that, again, we did a couple of months ago. Um, but that is also right down here. I've already created this. And again, this is uh, SRV dev disk by label files and then slash YouTube. And that's what we've got uh, right here. I've gone ahead and created both of those. And actually I've gone so far as to share both of those in SMB CIFS 
over here under shares. Here we can see the config folder. And uh, down here at the bottom, we can see YouTube. So uh, that's basically where I got those two volumes. Now, if I was going to uh, go in and add, you know, port 5900 and 3129, uh, of course I would do that right here. Uh, I would just do, you know, 5900 and then 5900, oops, 5900 like that. I'm not ever gonna use those ports. I'm only gonna use the, the, the uh, browser uh, GUI. So I'm not gonna worry about those, but you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, all that being said, all of this is good to go. Uh, in fact, this is probably going to go really quick because I'm pretty sure I still have the image downloaded uh, and saved on my server. So this should actually deploy almost instantly. Uh, so let's go ahead and scroll down. We'll click on deploy the stack. And uh, maybe maybe it didn't save it. Maybe we're going to have to actually download that. And that's fine. No big deal there. We'll just give this a minute to download and configure. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next steps. All right. So now if we come over here to containers, uh, right here, we've got JDownloader uh, set up and running. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the logs. Uh, it looks like maybe all of this is correct. So what we can do then, uh, switch this port 81 uh, to 5800 and we'll say leave and nothing happened. Uh, here we can see that it's got uh, server disconnected code 1006. Um, again, this is the same thing we ran into with handbrake, uh, the easy fix for this, at least in this case. Of course, is to go to Firefox. Let's go ahead and uh, bring this into the right window here. Oops, oops, come on, there we go. My uh, my M570 is dying on me. I've got a new a new mouse be here tomorrow, but it does a lot of double clicking when I don't want it to. So let's go ahead and paste that URL in there. And here we go. Uh, here you can see I've actually already done some testing. It did already save some stuff from there from some testing earlier. Uh, but basically, what we can do here. Uh, is let's minimize this. Let's actually go to my YouTube channel. Um, and I, I discovered one of the reasons that a lot of people I think wanted this particular application was because it allows you to download MP3s of uh, the video files. And I'll go ahead and show that. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and grab this short video here. We're gonna copy this link address uh, and then we'll bring this back up. And something I've noticed is when you want to um, add a new link here, uh, and you click, you can't, like it doesn't let you uh, paste anything in here. So what you can do is actually come up here where it says clipboard, uh, paste that, click submit, and then you can paste. It's an extra step, but it sure is easier than having to type all that nonsense out. So uh, all we've got to do here is click continue uh, and it's thinking about it. Here we go. Um, so now it hasn't done anything just yet. What we want to do here is take a look and see. So we've got an M4A file. Uh, that's basically going to be your MP3 file, your audio file of that particular video. Uh, and then of course we've got the actual video file here. Uh, looks like we've got our, our thumbnail. Um, we've got our description. And uh, then we've actually got all of the subtitles as well. And you can uh, choose, uh, I believe you can choose uh, which of those you'd like. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just say, uh, go ahead and start, download all of that. And you can see that it finished up um, uh, the, 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 the small stuff first. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, so it's still got um, the, the audio file and it's still got the video file to download, uh, but it's going through that audio file pretty quickly, all things considered. Uh, if you look up here at the top, you can see the average speed and the current speed. Uh, and that's all going uh, fa fairly, fairly well, I suppose. Um, but we'll go ahead and give this a minute to finish up. And uh, then we'll go ahead and take a look at the download folder. All right, so it looks like it just finished up the uh, M4A file there. Uh, so now we've got the audio version, basically the podcast version, uh, if we wanted to do that. So now we'll just hang out and wait uh, for the actual video to finish uh, downloading here. Should just take it a couple more minutes. Um, but you know what, because I've already downloaded uh, some other stuff up here, uh, we can, we can actually go take a look at it now. So if we come over here uh, to YouTube, uh, here we are. Um, let's see, which one did we download there? That was launch versions two and three. Uh, here you can see uh, the, the video file is still a part file at this point. Uh, we've got our SRT, which is gonna be um, uh, subtitles. Uh, we've got a text document right there. That is the entire description uh, of the video. I dig that they've got that separated out. Uh, here is the thumbnail. Uh, there we go, just like that. Uh, and then up here, we've got 
Uh, another SRT file. I'm not sure why it's got two of them, but it does. And then uh, up here we've got uh, the audio file. Uh, so if I were to uh, go ahead and run that, uh, here we are. Uh, let's turn up the volume a little bit. The topic I want to touch on today is something that's come up uh, a few times recently, but several times over the course of uh, me doing these different types of uh, Docker tutorials. And so there you go. Now all we've got to do is wait for this uh, video file to finish. It looks like it's got just under two minutes here, about a minute and 50. Of course, that number is going to bounce around quite a bit, depending on our uh, connection speed. Um, but that's pretty much all you've got to do. Of course, uh, you could, if you wanted to, download websites, uh, web pages, uh, all kinds of different stuff. If you had a photo gallery you wanted to download, you could do that as well, uh, all using JDownloader2 in this case. Okay, guys, there you go. There's how to install JDownloader2 in Docker uh, using Portainer, a modified uh, uh Docker uh, file that we got from uh, hub.docker.com. Again, this is uh, JRE Sage, uh, I believe. Let me, let me, oh, it double clicked. Let me do that. Luckily, Control Shift T is a thing. Uh, yeah, JLE Sage is downloader to J downloader to. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Um, also, like I said, all of this will be available in the blog post linked in the description down below. Also, while you're down there looking at the description, uh, there are some other links you might want to take a look at. There is merch, uh, but that's, of course, going very slow with everything going on right now. Uh, but there's also coffee for a one time tip. Uh, if you uh, found this video helpful and you just want to send me a one time tip, uh, you could do that. There's also Patreon uh, where you can become a patron. There's, uh, I think, three different levels that you can subscribe to. Uh, two of those will give you access to a uh, patrons only discord server uh, where we can just hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. So uh, I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.